Hey everyone, I'm gonna go over some of these problems here on unit five, topic four. Uh, there's gonna be one more little um, assignment posted this week and then that's gonna be the rest of the stuff from here on out until the end of spring break. So get this stuff done this week and if you have anything that you are not able to finish this week for some reason, um, you're welcome to use the spring break time if you have it to work and finish it up. Don't feel pressured to do it. I will still leave those assignments up here, but um, be a good time to do it if you're sitting at home. So here are, uh, is unit five, topic four assignment. I'm gonna go over all these review questions since it's good practice and we are gonna do um, a, a review and form, not formal, but we're gonna do an assessment over the entire unit after the break. So I wanna make sure that we keep relooping this stuff. So question number one, says you are investing $5,000 into an account which earns 3.2% interest every year. Which expression could calculate the amount in the account after 20 years? So I look at the key word being earns, and right there, earns is gonna be growth. So we're looking at A equals little a, one plus R to the T power. Now if my R value is 3.2%, I can convert that to a decimal by doing um, a division by 100. So that's gonna give me 0 0.032. And I wanna add that to one. So one plus, my, my, my A value is 5,000, that's my starting value. So one plus 0 0.032. And my T value is gonna be 20 because we're talking 20 years, right? So 20 years is gonna be my T value. And when I add this together, I'm gonna to get 1.032. So be careful with your decimals. It's not 1.32, that would be 32%. All right, let's look at number two. A car is losing 5.2% of its value each year. If the car was initially purchased for $25,000, what's gonna be after 12 years around the nearest cent? I'll get you set up here. I'm not gonna give the answer to this, but I will, um, I will gladly get you set up. So for this one, it's losing, so it's gonna be decay. So A equals A1 minus R to the T power. If the initial value was $25,000, that's my A value. And my rate is 5.2%, again, divide that by 100. And that's gonna give you 0 0.052. And what's its value going to be after 12 years? So a T is gonna be your, uh, the number 12. And we wanna subtract one minus 0.52. 0 0.052. So we will do that. That's going to give us 0 So you're gonna put that into Desmos, and round to the nearest cent means um, after the decimal place, two numbers, nearest cent, dollars, and cents. So two numbers after the decimal place. Question three. The piecewise function, f of x, and an exponential function are shown below. So we have this piecewise function and an exponential function, and we wanna know uh, what is f of 10 minus g of 10? Well, f is the piecewise function. Notice that it says f of x there. And so we're plugging in 10 into one of these, and then g of 10, that's the exponential function. So let's first figure out where 10 is gonna get plugged into. So if I look at these inequalities, 10, if I if I substitute 10 into here, 10 is not less than negative two. It is not between negative two and five, but it is greater than five. So I'm gonna substitute 10 into the x for five x cubed minus seven x. So for that, 
f of 10 is going to be 5 times 10 to the third power minus 7 times 10. And that I'll just put right into the calculator. So 5 parentheses 10, close parentheses, shift 6, 3 right arrow, minus 7 parentheses 10. And that's a big number, 4930. So that's that number, 4930. G of 10 is following the pattern for the exponential function. And so we have to look at how much is it being multiplied by. So 3, 6, 12, 24, that pattern is being multiplied by 2. So I can get G of 10 by multiplying each number by 2 from the previous number in the Y column. So So g of 0 is 3, g of 1 is 6, g of 2 is 12, g of 3 is 24. If I keep multiplying by 2, then I'm eventually going to get to when x is 10. So I can do 48 there, um, 96. One ninety-two. But at that point, I'm just going to get some assistance here. So um, one ninety-two times two, three eighty-four. By the way, I do in the times by doing shift eight. 768, 1536, and one more. 3072. So G of 10. There's three, zero, seven, two. And now that I went through all that trouble, let me remind you a quicker way to do it. This is your A value, so it's gonna be three. Your base is gonna be two since you're multiplying by two, and your exponent will be 10. So that should get us the same thing. Three parentheses, two raised to the 10th power, three, zero, seven, two. So the question wants to know what is F of 10, minus g of 10, well, we have those two numbers. All you need to do is subtract them, put it in the calculator, and give me your answer for the question. Okay, number four, which expression represents exponential growth? Exponential growth functions are when the base is greater than one and the exponent is a positive x. So 3 divided by 2 is bigger than 1. 1 divided by 3 is not. 3 divided by 2 here is bigger than 1. And 0 0.98 is not. They all have positive x's except for this negative x. So what happens, if I were to look at that 3 over 2 and say, well, that's going to be growth because 3 divided by 2 is bigger than 1, what that negative x is doing is making that turn into decay. So it's actually not going to be this one. It should be this one. Let me go graph that. You can highlight a, pro, uh, um, a math expression in Canvas on your computer, and you can do Control-C. And if you go into Desmos, if you press Control-V, it'll put latex in a colon. If you just highlight that and press backspace, uh, it'll give you the rest of it, the way it's supposed to be graphed. You see how that's going up? That's growth. Decay would be if that were a negative x in the exponent. That's decay, because that's going down as it goes to the right. So you want to pick that one there. Okay, question five. Which transformations map f of x onto g of x? 
Well, we're going to look at the, the patterns here. If I want to know 5 to the x power and I want it to move 5x minus 6 plus 4, remember that when it's x minus 6, it's left to right when it's in the exponent, and it's always the opposite of the direction. So we think minus 6 on the x-axis as being negative, but really that's actually pulling that in the positive direction. That's going to be right. This is going to be plus 4 at the end. That's going to take it up. I mean, we can graph it if we do 5 to the x power. and five raised to the, now when you're putting multiple things in the exponent in Desmos, you do need parentheses. So parentheses x minus six. You see how that brought that five, that brought that to the right. And then at the end plus four, that's gonna bring it up. So it's gonna go right and up. How much to the right? Just that number there. How much up? That number. Question six is another transformation problem. Um, log base three of x, and we want it to change to log base three of x plus one minus three. Well, the same rules apply. If it's dealing with the x, that's left or right, and it's the opposite. So that will not go right one, that'll go left. This minus three at the end is gonna take it down. And you can graph a log by just typing in log, and you can do shift minus, and I forget what the base was, three. And then logs are inverses of exponentials. So remember that's going to be, it, it's gonna be basically a reflection and it's gonna go that way. So if I want it to go x plus one minus three, log shift minus three, parentheses x plus one, that actually took it left. And then minus three is gonna take it down. So it's gonna go left one and down three. Um, question seven is evaluate log base eight of 181 using log base in your math menu and your calculator. Now I used to teach this with the TI-84 back before I used Desmos. So that's on the TI-84. I don't have my TI-84 with me, so I can't show you, but um, log base is change of base formula, but log base eight of 181, that's just right in here. You can do, you know, I haven't shown you how I type this. So if you wanna see what I'm doing, Let's see if I can do this here. Well, you just have to turn your head sideways. So you'll do log, um, and then you do, you hold on the shift button, minus, and then that puts in the eight in the um, base. And then you can, once the eight's down there, then you can press the right arrow. So you can see me do that here. And then that'll put it you back up to the regular part and see 181. And uh, that's going to give you about 2.499999999, uh, 2.499948629903. Of course, we don't need to put all those decimals in there. It says around in the nearest tenth. Well, if I'm around in the nearest tenth, that's one number after the decimal place. Now, do you want to say 2.4 or 2.5? Well, I would say 2.5 because that nine is going to bump that up. Question eight is another review. How do we rewrite two to the x equals 24? Logs are rewritten into exponentials. Exponentials can be written into logs. So for question eight, if you want to rewrite two to the x power equals 24, we want to write log. What is your base? Is it two, x, or 24? Well, it's gonna be two. That's gonna go there. And remember, these two split up. So in there, you would not put x because you wanna split them apart. You would put the 24. The exponent gets moved to the other side. That's how you wanna write it. So remember, this is out and back. Okay, so questions one through eight 
we're um, dealing with some older stuff. Let's look at number nine. Question nine says, which equation expression is equivalent? Well, log of base four of 18 with logs, you know, log base four of 18, you can evaluate that number, but that's not really what this question's asking. It wants to know which one of those is gonna give you the same thing. Well, I mean, you can take a calculator and you can test all these decimals out. I, mean, I wanna say like log base four of 18, I certainly can type in log shift minus four, right arrow 18, and it's gonna give me 2.0849. If I wanna know which one of those is the same thing, I could type all of these in. You know, I could say maybe, maybe I think it's log base four of lo over log 18. Or I could say log of four divided by log of 18. But that's not the same number, right? So what happens maybe if I switch them? Maybe put the log of four down there and put the 18 up here. Notice it's the same thing, right? That's called the change of base formula. So the change of base, just a little, you know, the reason why we have that formula is because not all calculators have the capability to do logs and bases other than base 10. So what you do is you say log of 18, that's, that's base 10 of log, all right? Log of four, if I don't write a base in there, it's assumed it's base 10, but because I have the same base, it's the same as evaluating a log when the base is four. It's kind of weird how that works, but those equal the same thing. And what, what matters is the number down there is the number on the bottom. Now, if it had said log base 18 of four, you're not gonna write it like this. You would write it log of four over log of 18. So whatever logs in the little subscript is the, is the number in the log on the denominator. Okay, but since it's this one, that's how you want to write it. That one's pretty similar, so I'm going to skip that. Same with that one. Same with that one. Let's get into solving. So question 13 says, solve the equation 4x, 5 to the x power equals 52. Now the way I solve these is I rewrite it as a log and I basically say log and I take the base and the exponent, the base of what the exponent is, so log base five. And in the log, I put the other side of the equation. So I'll put 52 and I set it equal to x. Now, normally I would evaluate it and see what that number is, but this doesn't have that as an option. Log base five of 52, that's given right in your answer choice. Now, if I wanted to know what that was, of course I would do log shift minus five, right arrow 52 and get the answer. And let me remind you that this can be done. You know, if I do five and I raise that to that power, two point, four, five, five, zero, four, five, seven, five, seven, three, one. You see how that is essentially 52 right below it. So we, what we did was we solved for that exponent over here. Okay, five to that, two, five to that power is equal to 50, 52. And, um, you know, that can be done with logs. Of course, I, I would, I have to make sure that you have all the ways that you can solve that. So, you know, if you are solving that using maybe a graph, you could say five to the X power. And you know, that's an exponential growth function, right? I wanna know what is that value, what is that when, when it equals 52? So maybe on a new line, you could do Y equals 52. Now 52 is pretty high, so you might have to drag down your graph, but if you look up there where it crosses it, there's your 2.455 right there. So that is gonna be the same as saying, log shift minus base five of 52, 2.455. So I think that's pretty cool. Oh, well that's the same problem. They just want the decimal. So thousandth is three numbers. So we just went over that. 
This one's pretty similar. Um, just remember that the base here is on this side. So 2.5 would be the base of the log, not 68. And this is just one in the decimal form. So you can do 15 and 16. Uh, I can do 17 with you. So let's see, 17, you have three, five to the x power equals 54. Now what you wanna do on this problem is you wanna divide both sides by three. So 54 divided by three, I think it's 17. 18, well, I'm glad I checked because my brain was thinking 51. So five to the x power is equal to 18. Now that you have that, that coefficient divided out, then you can solve it like we did in the previous problem. So I wanna write it as a log. What's the base of that log gonna be? Whatever's being raised, so five. 18 will go in there, and you set it equal to the exponent. So that's what we want to evaluate. Well, we don't have to evaluate it. It's, it's given to us in that form. So you just got to find the one that matches that. Now, this is the same problem. They want the decimal. So then you go ahead and plug it into the calculator and you'll get your decimal. So, you know, 19 is very similar. We want to divide by that number put it in a log and get the decimal equivalent on the next answer. So I will skip 19. And 20 is the same problem. 21 and 22 are similar too. You just have decimals to deal with. But I'll go ahead and do 23. So 23, you have two parentheses five to the three X minus one is equal to eight. So on this problem, now this is the last one I'm gonna do here. You wanna first divide by that leading number, that leading coefficient, the stretch factor. I feel like Bob Ross. This is gonna be five to the three X minus one equals four. Okay, so where we go with this next is this three X minus one is your exponent. We're gonna, we're gonna leave that alone. We're gonna write this as a log. The base of that log is the five. And it's, it's the base because that's what's being raised. So the five goes down there. Inside the log function is going to be the other side of the equation. So that'd be like your a value. So that's going to be four. Yikes, kind of messed that up. And I'm not using pencil, shame on me. And we set that equal to your exponent. So that's going to go outside of the other side of the equation, three X minus one. Log base five of four is equal to three X minus one. Now I'm gonna to wanna to get this part, log base five of four. So I will go ahead and just write log shift minus five parentheses four. And that number is 0 0.86135, 0 0.86135. And I could go on further if I wanted to, but that's enough decimals to prove my point. That's the equation you want to solve. So you can solve that equation by undoing what's on the side. If I have a minus one, I'm going to add one to both sides. So let's see, I want to take that number 0 0.86. I mean, we know one plus that is going to be 1.86. Um, but just being consistent here, we're going to add one. And that's going to be 1.86135. is equal to three X. My last step to solve for X would be to divide by three. Cancel those out. 
So that number divided by three, 1.86135, divided by three is approximately 0 0.62, 0 0.45. Now how far you wanna go as, as long as you get me two places, I'm, I'm usually pretty good with that. So 0 0.62 is an acceptable answer. If you wanna put all of that in there, go for it. 0 0.62, 0 0.45. And remember that the alternate way to do this would be using graphs. So write this down, because I'm going to take it off in a sec. Or pause it or something. Um, you can do a graph if you'd like. Remember that that graph would look like this. It would be two parentheses five, the original problem, raised to the three x minus one. And I'm going to need parentheses in there. And I would do y equals 8. And figure out where they cross. So there's my exponential function. If I click there, it's telling me 0.62, which is exactly what we solved for by hand. Well, we did it using the calculator, but we did it using logs, whereas this was just a graph, 0 0.62. So I would just put that in there and call it good. And uh, I think there's another one after that. And these two are very similar. So um, there you go. Uh, hopefully that's enough examples for you to work with and uh, get it submitted. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.